Hey everyone, um, I'm, a, I'm Dr. Maxwell Serkin. I'm a uh, board certified general surgeon with the American College of Surgeons. Uh, I am currently uh, in the United States Army. I'm a major. I work at Womack Army Hospital uh, as a staff general surgeon there. Um, I apologize ahead of time uh, for this video and kind of what's going on. Uh, I haven't slept in 48 hours, but uh, what I have done is I have built a uh, ICU mechanical ventilator uh, utilizing a heavy mixer and uh, supplies that I bought and made uh, from Lowe's Hardware. Um, to fully understand this, uh, I have to explain to you what a ICU mechanical ventilator does and what are its goals. What are what is its what are what are its goals that it's supposed to do, uh, so we can achieve those goals. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you that there's nothing magical about an ICU mechanical ventilator. When someone has a tube in their throat and they have to, or they can't breathe, someone has to be there and breathe for them, whether it's a man or a machine. Currently, because of our crisis right now, we are running out of machines, and people either don't have a machine or they have to have a family member or someone bag them, right? Because ventilators are these big, confusing things that cost tons of money, and they're really not. Um, and so uh, the purpose of this is to show you that you can build a ventilator that in an emergency, apocalypse, absolute nightmare scenario, you won't have to choose if you're in a really bad place in a mass cal scenario or you're in a third world country or something, you don't have the resources or money, then you might be able to get with someone who can build this for you or build it yourself and you don't have to choose between spending someone to bag them, especially if you don't have them, or dying because they don't have a ventilator. And so uh, I'm going to preface this with the fact that I have no engineering background. Um, I, I've never taken any classes. All of what you see here was guys at Lowe's being really nice to me uh, and helping me out, my father-in-law, and um, basically YouTube. And so my goal is, is that I want you to show, I want to show you this. It is not a finished product. I mean, it's, it's finished, my version's finished, but it's not perfect. I want you to take this idea. It's open source. I'm not pursuing a patent. You know, just take this idea if you can do it better, do it better, please. Um, you know, if you can find a way to do it better, please do it better. And so, uh, uh, um, if you want to build on it, take it, go ahead. I don't care. Just save lives with it. You know, come up with a new idea. I'm just telling you, it's possible. So, to get into that, first, before I show you how it works, you need to understand that an ICU mechanical ventilator has to do four things. Two of them are for oxygen. Three, uh, two of them are for ventilating CO2. Oxygenation is actually the easier part of the two. FiO2, fraction, in, fraction of inspired oxygen. Uh, so basically, give someone extra oxygen. Put them on an oxygen mask. You can put it into the tube however you want. That's easy. You can hook an oxygen uh, tubing up to our little uh, bag valve mask here. Next is PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure. And that's a little valve that, is, that you can attach to the circuitry that basically creates back pressure, a little positive end uh, expiratory pressure to keep the alveoli full. You don't need a vent for any of those. You can, get, you can accomplish both of those with bag valve masks um, or with, any, with anything. You, those are not the hardest parts of the ventilator. What is hard is the tidal volume and the respiratory rate. How do you automate those? How do I give someone the same volume of air every time exactly and then go do something else, right? You know, if I'm sitting there with the bag, I can kind of do the same thing every time, but the rate might be off, right? That's the fourth thing, the respiratory rate. How do I give the same volume of air the same time every time exactly so I can make adjustments on it um, uh, without being there to do it myself? And how do I make a machine that does that? Well, this does that. Uh, so I have, um, I have a heavy mixer here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you here now. So I, I figure there's more heavy mixers than ventilators today. And so uh, kind of, I'm a little shaky. I haven't slept and I've had a lot of coffee, guys. Bear with me. I'm sorry. And so, so uh, here you can see here, I have a, I'm bad with this, sorry. So I've got a heavy mixer here and you can see there's a bolt on the front. Now that bolt is a little bit shy of a quarter of a, of a half inch. So I made my own little, uh, I took half inch piping from Lowe's and I hammered it down to fit. And then I put that on a socket 
which turns a, a, a threaded, um, uh, basically, uh, pipe, I don't know, a threaded rod. And that threaded rod goes to um, a wooden gear that I built. I cut it. And that wooden gear is four inches in diameter, and I loctited some uh, uh, automobile belt around it to create the gear, right? And so the, the, what's interesting about the, the mixer is that it's one revolution per cycle. So I don't want to give someone one breath every cycle, right? So I have to slow that down. So what I did is if, if this was four inches in diameter, I made a bigger wheel that's uh, six times that. So the circumference would be six times that. And therefore, you would give a breath, one breath every six seconds. And so I also, in here, you can see that in the gears, there was a little wobbling uh, going on there. Where is it? Yeah, I'm trying to show it to you guys. So there was a little wobbling between the gears um, because I'm not a, an engineer, right? And so to get them to stay on track together, I made a little spacer that you can see here that basically holds the two wheels together so the gears will always catch. Um, and then what I did is I took a PVC pipe um, that is just loosely able to spin so it, does, it has rolling friction instead of dragging friction. And then that goes and squeezes the bag down there. This can attach to a ventilator, and then the FiO2 uh, part is back here. There's some tubing to attach it to oxygen. And so, that's it. That's it, guys. Um, uh, the, the next video I'm going to post is it running, so you can see it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the names of all these things. I literally drew it up on a piece of paper, went to Lowe's and bought stuff that I think would work. Um, and thanks for, thanks for watching. Again, like, ventilators are not magic. You know, uh, this design is not perfect by any means necessary. So please, take this, take this design and play with it. If you're a YouTube guy and you're making shit from movies and you've got more engineering experience than me and you're sitting here doing nothing because there's no movies, make a vent. Like, make a better vent, please. Um, and so, we need them. And so, this is just kind of a, a call for everyone to say, I'm just a, a freaking surgeon, man. Like... I, I mess with bodies, but I don't know anything about this or mechanics. I know how to work a vent. Um, so I, I said, can I build one? Yeah, I can build one. And, and you can too. Anyone can. So please get out there and build it. All right. Uh, message me. Email me. I don't, I don't know. Uh, this is like my first real YouTube video. So all right. Thanks, guys. Bye.